Oh, oh my god. Have you seen a more exciting game of football? James Coppinger, this bloody guy, I swear to God, will go down as the GOAT, the greatest of all time. He's better than Jack Wilshere and Aaron Ramsey and Theo Walcott. Coppinger is a long-serving god. Oh my god, we were looking like we were losing that. And then we just pull off something like that. It was it was like Tiny Temper, written in the stars. Doncaster Rovers 3, Hull City 3. We were 3-1 down at half time. And my god. <laughs> my god. Oh my god, that, that. <laughs> oh Jesus, that, that. That, that, that was just the most exciting game of football I have seen in my life. You guys must feel the same. And you're going to get some deluded fans going, uh, it's only a point. Well, the point's a point and we gained it today because of Coppinger's free kick. Absolutely. First of all, I want to send my deepest best wishes and condolences to George Honeyman. He suffered a neck slash head injury. I thought it was a spinal injury, maybe. Uh, we don't know for certain what it is yet, but it took the entire uh, last couple of minutes of the uh, normal time, plus seven minutes of added time, so they had to add another five, six minutes on uh, to get him sorted and get him off the pitch. It was an accidental collision with the kilo, but, you know, best wishes to Honeyman because I'm sure he, he didn't want it to end like that. But my God, what a... It was, again, I think today was a tale of two halves. First half, you know, we, we got a good start. Then Hall grew into the game and we sort of lost our way. But I tell you something what, that second half, and I said this, I said this, as soon as Gomez comes off the pitch and Bostock comes on, Look at the flaming difference. Maggi Gomez is not a holding C CDM or a centre midfielder. He's, he's square pegs round holes. He's not playing in the right position. Gomez needs to be on the bench, back up for Richards along with Coppinger and maybe Smith if you can uh, slot in that area. But John Bostock, when he came on, you could see the levels. Gomez was... League One, top League One to mid League One quality midfielder. Bostock is championship quality. Championship. Not League One, championship. And you could bloody see that as soon as he came on that pitch. And then Coppinger comes on near the end. And that, that guy, that guy, I've been lucky enough to see him play when he started out at Rovers. I've been lucky to see Coppinger play at Bellevue and the Keepmoat Stadium. I've been lucky to see James Coppinger throughout his entire Doncaster Rovers career. And I've got so many childhood memories that I've got stored away. So many. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this right now. And I'm not over-exaggerating. I'm not lying. When he scored that free kick, I got so emotional um, watching that. I, I, I think I let out a few tears. And I'm not going to lie to you here. And the reason why I let out a few tears and was really emotional after seeing that free kick go in the back of the net is because of the guy that scored it. The guy that I've seen for the past... You know, for all his Doncaster Rovers career, in all the years I've been a Doncaster Rovers fan, I've seen James Coppinger play at least once every season. And he is just the most majestic human being on that pitch. He knows where the ball is. He knows where to find the target. That was that free kick had a few vibes of that free kick as part of the hat trick that he scored against Southend back in 2008. Absolutely. We're going to talk about the whole game because we are going to talk about the first half because it was a poor first half overall. Uh, even though we did try and get back into it in a few places, we just couldn't get our stride together. Um, you know, the, the big mistake today was, again, set pieces, conceding header goals. And a, a stat came up at half-time. And you saw by the half-time um, chat uh, stream that we did uh, today, we conceded seven headers this week. Four against Sunderland, three against Hull. All of Hull's goals were headed 
goals. Now, the Donny Rovers goals. Uh, Reese James's strike, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant strike. Again, sweeter than Cadbury. Um, then the penalty. It was so, so good to see Omar Bogle get his first goal for the club. Absolutely filled my heart with joy. And then the Coppinger free kick in the 102nd minute, whatever it is. The 102nd minute. That guy, that, that, that guy just fills my heart with joy. Coppinger, you're a legend, mate. You are a legend, mate. And again, and we, we, we nick a point from that, you know. And to be fair, off the second half performance, we deserved all three. Because Hall were just sitting back and sitting comfortable, playing it around, giving us the ball back all the time. Unlucky with the Hunnaman injury. And then Coppinger with the sweetest of free kicks. Absolutely just starstruck. Absolutely starstruck. So we earned a point from that game. We earned a precious, precious point over rivals. And God, that, that like I said, I'll say it again for a third time now. That is the most exciting game of football I have watched as a Rovers fan. That's got to be what up there with one of the most exciting finishes. You know, it's got to be right up there with the likes of that last-minute penalty for Brentford back in 2012-2013 when they hit the bar with Marcelo Trotter. We went up the other round with Billy Painter breaking away and Coppin just slotting it in to get the goal that sees us promoted to the championship and as champions. And like I said about the free kick, it was vibes of the South End second leg playoff semi-final in 2008 to complete the hat-trick against South End. It had vibes from that. And the goal and the whole atmosphere, and you could hear it on the commentary. If you were watching the game, you could hear it on the commentary. Um, the things I would say we need to improve on, and I'll go over this again at the end of the video in more detail, is we need to stop um, doing set pieces like that because clearly it's not working. Clearly we need to change how we defend set pieces or alter it to make it better that we defend set pieces. Um, I mean, someone with more technical terms than I have, comment down below what kind of formation we play with set pieces because I don't think it was zonal marking. I, 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 I think it was just... I think it was just loads of pressure in the box and try and head it away but we kept conceding from set pieces and another big factor another big negative for me today was the referee there was three or four handballs that they should have given i think the third of i think third one may third one maybe fourth one definitely was harsh uh but the first two absolutely handballs and they were both one after the other as well you know not too much of separating the two incidents both of them should have been penalties, in my opinion. And the referee was right there. He saw it. It's like, it's like bloody that uh, Bob, what's his name? That squidgy blue thing from Monsters vs. Aliens or Monsters and Aliens, whatever the DreamWorks film is. He could see it clearly with one eye, let alone two, and he decided not to get the handball on two separate occasions. That just explains the refereeing in this country. And also... That's actually also, I'm not going to lie to you, even though the referee was poor, I do think this is a prime example of why we need that kind of goal line technology, well, kind of goal line technology or more advanced goal line technology, and some kind of virtual assistant referee to help us in the Football League. Because incidents like that are just going to come back and bite other teams in the backside. So, you know, I'm not saying this for, as a salty Donny fan for not getting three points instead of one. I'm saying this because I think other teams deserve that kind of respect. We need a virtual assistant referee run correctly, not like the Premier League. Learn from the Bundesliga and run it correctly. Learn from Europe, not the Premier League. Run it correctly and give the clear and obvious. Don't completely change the game just give the clear and obvious and Danny Amos were calling for it and you know what in the words of Robbie Andrews and Danny Amos on commentary tonight it was a chess match who blinks first who makes the first move who calls for checkmate and if we're going off who gets the draw instead of who loses then and, and win doesn't count then we got checkmate today uh, so let's go through the squad. We're going to go through player ratings and I'm going to tell you what we need to do against Blackpool on Tuesday. Shout out to Lee Charles TV, by the way. Did a wonderful uh, stream for their game. They won against Portsmouth 1-0. They completely pressed Portsmouth off the park today, apparently. So uh, massive shout out to them. Um, first up, Balcom. <sighs> You know what? I think I think it was the second or third goal. He, should, he was at. It was completely at nowhere to be seen, and uh, there was a moment in the second half where it could have been four-one if Lewis Potter didn't hit the post and it sort of caved in. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's one of those things where um, I personally feel like Balcom had a bit of a sigh of relief moment there. But I'm gonna give um, I'm gonna give him. Let's give him a six. Let's let's be honest and give him a six. Um, Halliday, I'm going to give him a six as well. I think he was quite isolated. I, di I didn't think Taylor supported him towards the back. I think that, you know, so he was going down the route with Malik Wilkes. Again, it was like Aidan McGeady all over again. It was just, you know, what, what can't go right for us. So, overall, I think that he needs that extra support. He was quite isolated, which, you know, explained why there were so many crosses going into the box. He was running against Malik Wilkes, which felt like Aidan McGeady all over again. And thank God Malik Wilkes came off and brought on Josh Emmanuel. I didn't understand that, by the way, when Hall was taking attacking players off and defending players and sitting back. Like, you're trying to make sure you keep the game, you score a fourth goal, and you see it out, and then you bring on defensive players. So, you know, I don't know what the tactic was there, but uh, I'm not complaining. Uh, but how Holiday was quite isolated and didn't have too much support, but you know he did have an all right performance. Nothing too majestic, but it was all right. Um, Joe Wright, let's go first of all centre back wise. I'm going to go to the other side and go for Wright. I'm going to give him a six as well. I think he put in some good blocks and he tried his best. So overall, nothing too majestic anyway. Tom Anderson, Captain Tom Anderson, gonna give him a seven. Gotta be. He's. I think Reese James as well gets a seven. I'll explain about Reese James in a bit. But Tom Anderson, guess a seven for me. Defended two shots off the line, including, including that majestic out of the box long range strike from Doherty. That was a wonderful block off the line. He, he, he sacrificed the bridge of his nose, but it's like Outlast. In a twisted way in that game, there was a lot of sacrifice, especially in Outlast 2. If you've played it, you'll know what I mean. But Tom Anderson sacrificed the bridge of his nose around that area to head that off the line. So that's what you need. And you know what the best thing about Anderson was today? It wasn't just the blocks. It wasn't just the captain behavior. It was the passion. He had that passion in him again. And you could see it. I think it was when we scored the goal, when we scored the Reese James goal. Um, you could see Tom Anderson screaming. He was screaming at his players to calm down and get back and get ready to attack again. He's got that captain, man captain mentality. And you could see that today. Absolutely wonderful as a captain. Wonderful as a leader. And the blocks were heroic today. 7 out of 10 for Tom Anderson. And I'm only scoring him a 7 and not an 8 because we, in the end we did still can see three goals. Um, Reese James, I'm going to give him a seven at left back because, again, he was physical, he was demanding. The goal was sweeter than Cadbury's Dairy Milk. Um, wonderful strike from Reese James and just overall really good performance from him. Midfield, Gomez, he gets a five and that's being generous. I'm tempted to give him a four, to be honest, because... Even though he was moving about the pitch, he was still giving away passes, still giving away possession, still giving away the ball, not playing it right sometimes. He did play it forward a couple of times, which is great. It's good to have that attacking mentality, but again, square pegs around holes. He's not a holding midfielder. If you can't play Richards on one occasion, or if you want to drop Richards back into the midfield with Smith or Bostock or Robertson on a game if you're trying to rotate the players, play Gomez as a cam and keep him in that position because that's where he's best shining. So if you're not going to play him at cam, Keep him on the bench. Um, Smith gets a six for me. Uh, Tempted to give him a seven, though, because he was great. Um, played the ball really nicely. Played the ball forward pretty much always. And uh, had that attacking mentality. And that's what we like to see from him. Great to see him come back into the squad straight away. And uh, overall, nothing much to say else about Smith other than great. Um, Taylor. I'm going to give him a six. I think he was he was making stuff happen. He was trying to make stuff happen all the time when he was on the pitch. Uh, but overall, uh, just just an all right performance. Um, Sims on the other wing. I'm actually going to give him a seven. And the reason why I'm giving him a seven is because he was making stuff happen. He was trying to create stuff. He wasn't being given the free. It, it wasn't being given the freedom by Hull. But he was. You could see he's got that attacking mentality. And when he came, when when the substitution was announced, when he was going to come off, when he was when he came off. The head dropped back and you could see how frustrated he was because he wanted to still be on and create an impact. But, you know, all bygones be bygones. But Josh Sims was great today. I'm going to give him a seven. Taylor Richards, again, seven. Brilliant. Absolutely wonderful. Um, physical, attacking presence. We've seen that from him all season. And just 
wonderful physicality. Went for the 20-yarder a couple of times. Went for a 30-yarder in the first half, but uh, overall, good performance again. And finally, Omar Bogle. I'm going to give him a 7. Tempts to give him an 8. Got the penalties. Got his first goal for Rovers. Now now he can start kicking on now and getting those goals again. And um, overall, his build-up play was brilliant. Had a couple of chances, a few chances where he should have got the shots off quicker, but you know, I'm not going to completely rinse him for that because we all have those moments but you know what overall it was just it was great today subs bench finally um for going first to robertson i'm gonna give him a six he looked lively he looked like he was passing the ball really well holding the midfield quite well and had that presence about him so overall a decent show when he came on um gonna look now at uh, Bostock, when he came on at the start of the second half, right substitution, first of all. My God, that guy. Seven. Tempts to give him an eight. As soon as he came on, you could see the difference. You could see the difference. Absolutely 110%. He brings that technical, physical ability that you get at championship level, not League One level. And that's my problem with Badger Gomez in that position. Again, square pegs round holes, so we can't completely judge him for that. But, um, you know, overall, Bostock proves why he needs to start against Blackpool on Tuesday. Um, and then fine, and then finally, Lakilo. Uh, I'm going to give him a six. Overall, lively, looked about. And then finally, Coppinger. That guy... That guy, he gets a high seven, tends to give him an eight for that goal alone. Because, my God, that guy, as soon as he came on, you know what he was going to do. You know where he was looking for. He was looking for the back of the net. So, overall, very, very happy. Very, very satisfied. Um... So what do we need to do now against Blackpool? Well, you saw they won. Uh, we need to just keep pressing them off the park. Bostock needs to start against Blackpool. 110%. Should Taylor be on the bench? Sims on one wing, Coppinger on the other? Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, we saw Taylor go out. Uh, Taylor Richards go out wide uh, a couple of times uh, when he was on. But um, overall... I'd like to see Coppinger start just off that. I know he's got that presence and, may, you know, I, I think maybe he could do 60 minutes. Maybe Coppinger does start on Tuesday for rotation, but it was good to see him anyway. It was just good to see him anyway. Um, just, just, Gomez needs to be on the bench. I think it's similar to John, really. Just watch Richards, and if you're going to play in that holding midfield position again, watch Smith, watch Bostock, learn from them, and be just as good as them, if not better, or try and aim to be better than them, because um, I think Gomez needs that time out to just learn, recuperate, you know, educate yourself from them, and just have that kind of awe about you to learn and be educated by the people on the pitch. Similar with John at left back and centre back, learn from the people on the pitch and take that opportunity with full hands, with both hands, with 110% effort when you get your chance to start again or come on the pitch at some point. So, uh, overall, that's what we've got to do. Don't give away straight passes. Don't give away the ball. Learn to defend set piece, especially corners, because the corners is where the goals came in from today uh, for Hull City. So, we need to, you know, learn from that. If, the, if, if you're going for the same style and you're still conceding goals, just alter it a bit, Darren. Darren Moore, don't be afraid to alter your set-piece uh, defensive tactics. Alter it a bit. Make it look different. Make it look uh, unique and, you know, a bit um, not usual and start getting into the alterations of different tactics to defend set-pieces because if you're using the same tactic over and over again, you're going to keep getting found out. So you can't keep using the same thing over and over again. It's like old milk. You can't keep using the same old milk so it'll just go stour, uh, well, sour, not stour, sour, and it'll just taste horrible. It would taste like you've been drinking 78-year-old um, urine or something. So you've got to change it if it's not working. You've got to alter And if you don't want to completely change it, alter it a bit if it's not working to make it a little bit different. Even just a little bit different would be great. So, mate, overall from that, I'm just... I'm exhausted, mate. <laughs> I'll enjoy the highlights tonight unless... And, you know, compared to the past three games, I'll enjoy the highlights on Quest tonight. And, um, you know, other people have gained points, other people have dropped points. Hull have thankfully dropped points as well. 
uh, with this result. So, uh, you know, we're doing our bit, they're doing their bit for us. And, um, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll go into Blackpool on Tuesday and we'll go into this with 110% confidence and prove why we should get three points from that place. So, thank you very much, guys, for watching this match review. I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm going to grab a can of Budweiser and chillax now. And for now, guys, my name is Aaron Chana from Forever Football DRFC. And for now, guys, that is full time. Rovers till I die. Hull fans, pipe down. Oh!